Not exactly what you want to see while on a relaxing trip to the beach, or worse yet, in your backyard. Who or what can save us from crashing waves and rising waters? No, not Superman, but this guy, the oyster. Oyster reefs protect the shoreline by providing a physical buffer. If you've heard about hurricanes hitting the Gulf Coast before, you can imagine the tremendous amount of storm energy, wind and rain and waves. Oyster reefs provide a hard surface that breaks the wave energy up so that it doesn't damage the shoreline. Along with barrier islands and tidal marshes, oyster reefs are part of nature's natural defenses that break down waves, absorb rainfall, and minimize erosion. Not only do oysters protect us, they taste great too. I like my oysters best with a splash of lemon. And if you needed another reason to like oysters, mm. they're partly responsible for the other seafood we love. Oyster reefs are really a spectacular system. They protect the soft marsh shoreline. And in doing that, they provide this area of calm water behind the reef where seagrasses can grow. Together, the marsh, the seagrass, and the reefs provide just amazing habitat for our shellfish, for our fin fish. It's where all the babies grow up. In the Gulf of Mexico, it's these sea babies and their parents that attract refueling birds on their way to places as far as the Arctic and Antarctica. And this abundance is not lost on other organisms found in the Gulf. We've had generations of fishers, oystermen, and crabbers relying and making their livelihoods off of these natural resources. What might not be as obvious is that other industries, such as the shipping industry, are also linked with these natural resources. We have several bays that provide safe harbor and are important ports for our nation's economy. Those very industries also impact these areas. The wave energy created from the ships and barges actually erodes the shoreline. Oysters to the rescue, right? Unfortunately, 85% of the world's oyster reefs are gone. Overharvesting, pollution, and disease over the past century has left us with a mere 15%. Lucky for us, though, our oyster superhero has sidekicks. To help get back the 85%, the Nature Conservancy is restoring oyster reefs in key locations throughout the Gulf of Mexico. To recreate the oyster reefs, we're reusing old oyster shells collected from processing plants and in some places, restaurants. They're either put into bags or built into oyster reef structures and then deployed out in the water to provide a starting point for the next generation of oyster to grow on. So it's like the ultimate recycling. This oyster reef is a type of green infrastructure, an alternative to gray infrastructures like seawalls. There are a number of advantages that oyster reefs offer that seawalls don't. One of them is they can be set further off the shore, so you don't have to give up your natural shoreline in order to be protected from waves. The reefs also are able to self-repair because they're alive, they're a living reef. Instead of breaking down over time the way a concrete reef would, an oyster reef can actually rebuild itself. Not only rebuild, but thrive. Wow, look at him. Yeah, that's a stone crab. And then here's one of his cousins, much littler. Literally every nook and cranny provides a spot for someone. And this is something that you just can't get out of the seawall. Look at that. It's really? a whole new oyster. Yeah. yeah. With that's mussels crazy. growing on it, mussels and barnacles. John, what is that right here? It's a blenny. And the boys are always trying to impress the girls, <laughs> so I would guess it's a boy. All these creatures found their home in just this one bag of oyster shell. 150,000 more of these making up the reef along Coffee Island, providing immense habitat for all sorts of creatures. Which all equates to more food, more protection, and more fun. On the Gulf Coast, we live and play in these waters. This is our backyard. We really have a responsibility to give back to it. Even though we might live far away from the Gulf, we really are connected in important ways. And the things that we do have an effect here, and things that happen here have an effect on us. For starters, the water from 31 states drains into the Gulf of Mexico, so the choices we make every day have implications here. If there are ways for us to reduce the pollution that comes out of our cars, out of our houses, the amount of pollutants that might run off of our yards and gardens, those are all things that can eventually make their way here to the Gulf. For the 19 other states, your seafood or products you use every day may have come in through the Gulf. This is really the backyard of our nation. It is a place where we use nature to get a lot of benefits. And we use nature to fish and to play and for our economies. But nature also works for us in the ways that it protects us. It provides these services free of charge. With each of those activities comes impacts as well. And we have to be really careful about how we treat the Gulf so that it is there for us for the long term. 
This oyster has a lot more riding on it than just a few barnacles or mussels. Nature works hard, and that's why we work hard for nature. 